here's another video of this stacking anamorphic stacking lens system I have with this BGH one. I've also done videos uh, with this system on with this lens on a GH six. But in this video, I want to talk about what I my experience using this combo here and uh, having a first AC using on a very low budget a low budget follow focus system, a, a low budget wireless follow focus system by Asun. And he, here are the components. I'm going to attach it. It doesn't come with this yellow tape. It, it actually has no markings. So my first AC just put this yellow tape in order to have regular marks for focus marks. Otherwise, you have to look at this digital percentage. There's really no way to judge the feet distance. So that's why that is on there. I had just wrapped on a short film where I used this exact system here and this wireless follow focus. And also, I have a an older monitor that I've been using for a few months now, but I put it into play for this particular system, this setup, it worked perfectly. And that was the Mars One monitor. And this is the system I created. I built this just for this setup for my first AC to use. And I'll go over all the components and I'll show you how it works in this video. I've already talked about this rig in other videos, but just to do a quick recap, this is a two anamorphic lenses. Well, it's an anamorphic lens by Suri, a 50 millimeter, 1.8, 1.33 squeeze factor on a four by three sensor, shooting 5.8K uh, in four by three mode. You can stretch it out and it becomes 16 by nine. But if you add another anamorphic adapter on this anamorphic lens, it's called anamorphic stacking. And this one is by Great Joy, and it's a 1.35 times. Great Joy gives you the conversions where if you multiply the squeeze factors together, you're going to get an equivalent of uh, this, the, the, these factors. Other components up top, I have uh, Atomos Ninja 5. That's my monitor because there's no monitor LCD on the BGH-1 out of the box. It's a box camera, so you have to add a monitor. I have a top handle. This is a tilt -a cage I'll put links below to this video of, I go into more depth of, of this rig and various other rigs. And then I, it's all on a rod system. This has to have some lens support because this lens is heavier than the body. This is a Sennheiser MK200. I just use this for reference audio. I had a sound person on the short film, so I don't, I didn't need, I was doing dual sound. And if you're curious, I did dual sound on this Mix Pre 6 Mark II. This is what I did the dual sound. I, I, I didn't have a, I just had a friend to do sound. So the benefit of this is that it's 32 bit float. So I didn't really care about the sound person getting the levels correctly. I just had to worry about their mic placement. Then on the back here is a small rig. Uh, V99 battery, one of my favorite v uh, uh, small V-mount batteries, and that's powering the monitor. And this is also going to power the follow focus, the wireless follow focus. The BGH-1 is powered by its own battery here. Uh, I could power it by the V-mount, but these batteries that it comes with, one of the benefits of the BGH-1 is it takes these larger Panasonic camcorder batteries. And this lasts about four hours to power the camera. So I only swap the battery once in an eight hour shoot day. So that's the system. Now I'm gonna put on the follow focus. It's just one rod setup. You can see it takes five to 16.8 volts in. And then that cam right there is if you wanna connect the follow focus directly to this device here. And then the USB-C to USB-C for the power that this came with was too short of a distance to reach my V-mount battery on the other side. So this is just a, a USB-C to USB-C that I use for my phone. And um, I have to wrap it up because this is a little too long, but I'm gonna connect this to get power. There's no on off switch on the gear. Once you plug it in, it just turns on. Before I set up the a first AC monitor that this is gonna be connected to, I first need to pair the follow focus with the gear and then uh, calibrate it. So to turn this on, this takes Sony batteries in there. So these last about two and a half hours per battery, depending on how long they're in use. So to turn this on, you have to press this red record button. 
hold it for two seconds, and it's on. Since I just used these, I just finished my shoot, this should already be paired. So let me just see if it's paired. Yeah, it's already paired, but I do need to calibrate it. Every time you turn this on and off, you have to recalibrate it. And calibrating it is easy. There's a calibration button. You just hit that once, and then it's automatically calibrating. Calibration just means it's finding the endpoints of the lens, so that way it will match your wheel here. And see how responsive this is? And here's what you see on the the, the screen. You only see percentages. Up there it says 32%. That's the battery life of the Sony battery in here. And this is all the first AC has to, uh, they're monitoring. That's why my first AC had this gaff tape so that they could have marks for them for themselves. And then on this side, there's a cool feature. It's an AB feature here where you can set uh, two focus marks by hitting A and then you, you set it, you hit B. I mean, you, you do your second mark, you hit B, and then you just hit with the press of a button, it uh, focuses to the AB point automatically without having to turn the wheel. My AC was reluctant to do that so we never use that feature, but these are the other buttons. Here is a USB-C USB to plug in there if you wanna be wired. And that is all set up. And look how responsive that is. Now I'm gonna set up the monitor. Here are the components of the monitor that my first AC used. First, the way it connects to the camera is it has both an HDMI in out and an SDI in. Because I was using the HDMI for my, for my own camera monitor, for the camera operator's monitor, for the first AC, I used the, B, uh, the BGH-1's secondary output, which is the uh, SDI. So the SDI is now plugged into the SDI out of the BGH-1. And with the BGH-1, with uh, that's I, I don't know if, the, if it's similar with all of the Panasonic cameras, but with the Panasonic BGH-1, the all of your information the menu screen and all that stuff you can only choose one output for it either the sdi or the hdmi you can't do both and you can't get rid of the displays once you choose the sdi or the hdmi so what i did here which worked perfectly was i had all my display information all the menu settings in the hdmi monitor on the HDMI out to that monitor. So I got to see my my uh, aperture, my ISO, all the menu settings. That was all through the Atmos up there uh, on top of the handle. With this was exclusively for my AC. So it was a clean SDI into this monitor. They, they saw no uh, displays at all from the camera. So on the back here, this is powered by a Sony MPF battery. But there's also power here for a D-tap in, and then also it can go out to, to power another device. To turn this on, just hit this button here, and it takes a second to power on. The markings here, it's a touch screen, and uh, you could choose different options for the monitor of what you wanna do. You can punch in one-to-one, -one, and this is what my AC was doing, punching in to get focus and then punching out. And then also there's peaking, but the peaking didn't work as well on this. And you can see it's already laid out in, uh, the squeeze factor is already proper. So when you go out with the with the uh, SDI, the camera has a 1.8 times uh, de-squeezed. You can change the de-squeezing for the display. I chose 1.8 and I sent that out to uh, the SDI. And this is true 1.8 de-squeezed by a 4x3 sensor. And so my AC got to see properly what it's going to look like. Also, through the SDI and the HDMI, you could apply the V-Log LUT. So I was shooting in V-Log, and this shoots 422 10-bit V-Log. I was applying the LUT, and I sent it out to the through the SDI so my first AC was not only seen proper de squeezed they were also seen uh, with the LUT already applied so they're not seeing a flat 
profile. Let me also show you how I'm rigging this out because that you probably have a lot of questions and this is what I'm most proud of. This is all mounted with two pieces. This is a six inch 15 millimeter rod and this right here is a camera mount adapter. It's a camera to tripod or a, a light stand mount adapter by Manfrotto. I, they sell a lot of these and I'll put links to this product because they still sell this. And this is just a generic rod. You can get this anywhere. The handle is a bit of, I don't know where to get this. So this was a Red Rock Micro back when they were bigger, a bigger company. And this is essentially a bicycle, a bicycle grip. And this, at the time I got this, this was almost $100 when I got just this grip. Remember when grips used to be so expensive? And it just connects with, with the rod mount. And on the end, because it's like a bicycle handle, it's just a hole here. And this hole is a perfect diameter to go into a standard C-stand. So this is just a C-stand right here. Uh, a, a smaller C stand and I could just put it right in there and it fits perfectly and that's how it was mounted that's how my first C first AC mounted it whenever they weren't holding it it was just mounted like this and it's it was pretty it's pretty sturdy and it's adjustable too because since this is all just on a rod system you could unloosen things and move the monitor around on the Mars one Hollyland there's quarter 20s on the bottom on the bottom here and a quarter 20 on the side. That's how I was able to mount this uh, camera to C-stand adapter right to the side of it. There's not a lot of other monitors that have all of these mounting points, but the Mars One does have that. And on this side, finally, is the trick. <laughs> this was the big trick I had to figure out. So right here is an adapter that goes on cages that comes with the ASUN. On this side is a mount that just slips on here with friction. That's how this goes on, like this. And it's detachable or you could attach it. This usually is meant to go on cages. But I have two pieces here that I was able to adapt it to this rod. I don't know where to find these. I'll, I'll try to put links to these if I could find them, but I don't know if they're available anywhere. So this this piece right here comes with the ASUN and and the the screws here. It all comes with the ASUN. This piece right here is like a cheese plate, and that's where I screwed in. Let me just unloosen this. This is this is just a little cheese plate block. I cannibalized another camera cage, and that's how I got this piece. But I don't know if a piece like this is really available anywhere. I'm sure. Small rig or some other company sells something like this. This is like a cheese, I would call it a cheese plate mini block. And then what I have here is a double sided quarter 20. So it's a quarter 20 on this side and a quarter 20 on this side, double sided. Those, those are common, you could find those. So I screwed the mounting plate that's meant to go on cages of the ASUN to this cheese plate block. I used a quarter 20 to quarter 20 screw here. And with the rod that I'm using, there's a quarter 20 on this side. So you have to find a rod that has quarter 20 on the end. And those are common. So what I did here is I used this as one piece and I screwed it in to this side of the rod. I made sure it was tight. And then here you can see I, I lined it up all pretty compact. And then now that I have this pretty stu uh, sturdy on there, I'm able to take the wireless follow focus and slip it in here. It locks in. And now my first AC has their own monitor system that's sort of portable. They're still tethered to the camera, but they have a distance from me. But they don't have to have a, a focus whip to be right next to the camera or, or have a follow focus that, that's right next to the camera. They could be off onto their own. And with this response time of the ASUN, it's really fast. So the the whole, there's no latency issue with this, with this setup. So here's what they're seeing. That's how fast it worked. 
and you want to go hold it. This battery here, two of these lasted the entire day and we left it on for the whole eight hours. So I bet, I guess that's four hours, uh, four hours of charge. The final piece of this that, that really made this cool for my production is that the Mars M1, it's a wireless transmitter as well. And you could buy the other Hollyland transmitters that are about $350 and connect that to a, a monitor and you'll have a, a really uh, minor latency. But the, the Hollyland Mars One can broadcast to iOS mobile devices. So with uh, this system, it has its own Wi-Fi network and I was able to plug an iPad and an iPhone using the HoloLens app. And there was more latency using this method. But for my makeup artist and the producer that was also wanted to monitor in a video village, I, I was just using my iPad and going directly uh, from this monitor that the, that the AC was using to my video village. And it was a pretty cheap and affordable way, although there is a little bit of latency, to to see to have that capability so i haven't seen many other people any other productions do something like this because uh they might have more money than me and <laughs> they're not as they're not as cheap but this whole setup um is fairly affordable i would say the mars one this was about 500 something dollars this was around uh, 280 300 this rig i just cannibalized from other parts but if you were to purchase all this I, I would say it's like under 100 bucks and uh, once you have this first AC system oh and plus the MPF batteries they're, they're fairly cheap so I would say maybe under a thousand dollars or less maybe under eight hundred dollars you can get used components because you don't have to get the Mars one you can get a bunch of other as long as it has S SDI something like this on professional shoots used to cost thousands and now I think I got it under that um, and this is if you want more of a fancier system I don't know if I would use this on a feature film because uh, the reliability I'm not quite sure but on a short film on uh, on a weekend shoot a three-day shoot this worked fine this was great